and we are coming to you live from the heart of Palo Alto and Silicon Valley. We are at Hannah House here in Palo Alto where Iranian Americans have reached the top echelons in the Silicon Valley across many industries. Um, and one of our guests today, in fact, uh, Lily Sarafan, is joining us just from down the street where she works. Hi, Lily. Hello, hello, Salam, Iran Khanu. Salam, Lily June. <laughs> it's such an honor to be launching our story project with you. It is um, my pleasure, and it is an honor for me as well. Absolutely. So tell us about uh, where we're at here in Palo Alto. So we are downtown um, right now on University Avenue. It's called University Avenue because it runs right onto the Stanford campus. University Avenue turns into Palm Drive, which is the epic palm tree lined drive that leads onto the heart of Stanford. Um, in downtown we have a lot of companies and retail storefronts and you see people enjoying lunch and various meetings, a lot of action happening. That's awesome. And this Hannah House where we're at will give you a little taste of that. Um, we have different people holding meetings, um, you know, some of them are actually doing interviews. So why don't we walk up to our space? That sounds and, great. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your history. You're a daughter of Stanford. You went to Stanford. <laughs> you, were you raised in this area? I am beholden to Stanford University. Um, I was born in Iran, and at the age of three, the first time my mom and I moved to California, I went to Iran at the end of the Iran-Iraq War, 1989, went to second grade, an international school in Tehran, and after that we returned to San Francisco Bay Area, and I've lived in this area ever since. And tell us what you studied at Stanford, it was sort sure. of an epic story. <laughs> so I have a bachelor's of science degree in science, technology, and society, which is your prototypic interdisciplinary program combining social sciences um, and engineering. And then I completed a co-term degree, which means that you begin your graduate studies while still in an undergraduate program. And that was in management science and engineering, which is also an interdisciplinary degree. Um, so both very emblematic Stanford degrees. Um, I completed a minor in Middle Eastern studies and did um, an honors thesis on the role of the internet in Iran. Wow. Which I think is a perfect example of bringing together social sciences and engineering and technology and all of that is so important to the area that we're sitting in right now which yeah, is Silicon Valley. Absolutely. So the story project that we're launching today is called Up Close Va Personal. Up Close a Personal. <laughs> And um, it's all about getting to know our community in the digital space because what I've learned in, from 22 years at NPR News was that Latina women in particular are very good at using the digital space or turning to the digital space to tell their stories. Um, and it's unbelievable how you can organize and network around a hashtag. So um, we're excited. Paradis Sabeti is one of our uh, features uh, who you'll see and read about today. We also have a story coming up on Roshan Adaran Alavi, who's a business executive in the Washington, D.C. area. And of course, uh, Nazanin Bonyadi, actress, uh, who is going to be appearing in the Ben-Hur uh, film later in August. But Lily, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? You're the CEO of um, home care assistance. That's right. And you were recently named a uh, woman of the year uh, by the healthcare executives uh, in San Francisco. Super exciting. Tell us more about what you do. Tell us so, your story. <laughs> <laughs> so, home care assistance is the largest consumer healthcare company in aging services. And we've been here in the heart of Silicon Valley for 11 years. Started as a tiny Silicon Valley startup with a team of four. Now we employ more than 6,000 team members around the world. We have operations in 40 states and essentially we deploy on-demand and long-term health care to the home as an alternative to institutional settings. So I think these days on-demand services are very popular and familiar. When we started we were really pioneers um, within the healthcare space and so it's been an exciting platform to lead the charge in transforming aging services and really being at the nexus of health care, digital health and consumer services. So it's been quite a journey. Wonderful. And of course, um, that already is very pioneering to be a woman in tech, a leading woman in tech in Silicon Valley. We hear all the time. I've done reports on NPR for many years about how we lack, we don't have enough women um, who are joining the leadership positions in Silicon Valley. But tell us what about you know the, the extra sort of responsibility of also being an Iranian-American woman in this space? 
tell us about the Iranian Americans in Silicon Valley and you know how you see women's voices emerging sure so I've always taken it as a huge responsibility you know being an Iranian American woman and trying to serve as a you know a role model of sorts um, in being really proud of my heritage and being really involved in the Iranian American community but not having that be at the expense of my professional journey um, I think the way that I have voiced my you know my female strength in my Iranian American heritage is through being very vocal about my social and policy positions. I don't shy away from that, even in the context of my work. And I think that sometimes people imagine that there's risk associated with that, you know, kind of being a proud, you know, immigrant. And especially for me, I sit in a lot of boardrooms where not a lot of people in the room look like me. I'm young, I'm an immigrant, I'm of Iranian descent, I'm a woman. So a lot of things that might be viewed as shortcomings or could lead to some sort of bias or discrimination and I've always turned that model on its head because I figure if someone doesn't expect a lot out of me I can probably open my mouth engage in the discussion and demonstrate to them very quickly that I can add value to that conversation and hopefully change their views and perceptions of, of women leaders and Iranian Americans in general fantastic so what would you like to see from this storytelling project we're asking women um, not just in the United States but all over the world to use the hashtag up close that personal this summer as part of our storytelling project what what stories would you like to hear I would love to hear um, people's personal stories of what their Iranian heritage means to them. Mm -hmm. I know depending on when people, you know, if they lived in Iran or if they were born and, and raised here, um, depending on what geographic region in the United States um, or even Europe and abroad that they were based in, they may have different interactions with the Iranian American community and even different inter interactions with family and friends in Iran. I'd love to hear those different stories. And then in terms of people's lives here, I think that Iranians, like you mentioned earlier, have really reached the echelon of success across um, these days, we're very fortunate, media and politics mm -hmm. and um, academia and industry, I'd love to hear those personal stories because I think they can serve as such a source of inspiration to the next generation. And finally, I think once you serve as inspiration to the next generation, we need to make sure to track and measure the progress right. that we're making as a community so that we can really demonstrate that the Iranian American community aren't just professionally successful in various silos, but together we are a powerful force. And of course, I'm biased. I think Iranian American <laughs> women and Iranian women in general have been at the forefront of change and progress for generations. Absolutely. And I'm so thrilled to see Mariam Khosravani just posted on Facebook, IAW Foundation is proud to showcase success stories of Iranian women from all the world. We appreciate you, Mariam, for everything you have done for the unity that you have brought in the context of bringing professional women together, giving us an opportunity to share stories about our challenges, our successes, what we've learned from one another. So you are epic in uh, many of our minds, and we thank you. We're sorry that you weren't able to be on the Facebook Live with us, but you're right here, so <laughs> you're here in spirit. Um, yeah, so make sure that uh, you check out the hashtag up close that personal, uh, stay in touch, share your stories with us, and um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much, it's such a pleasure. Um, thank you to everyone out there, and I look forward to the further initiatives that come with up close that personal. Thank you.